hype can be crucial to a film's success, but too much and the movie falls short of expectations. Welcome to WatchMojo UK, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 overhyped British movies. I'm pregnant. Wow, okay. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking at films that are a full or part British production, or have significant levels of British involvement and ranking them on how disappointing they were in comparison to the pre-release excitement they generated. While we're not suggesting that these films are outright awful, they weren't quite worth the fuss that was made of them. Oh great Clifford, now look what you've gone and done. Well that's just too bad. Yeah well it is too bad, cause you know what, I'm going home now, see ya. Bye. Number 10, Murder on the Orient Express. It all looks so promising, but this Kenneth Branagh version of Agatha Christie's famous Who Done It never quite gains momentum. It makes most of life unbearable. The efforts of the all-star cast are commendable, but a distinct lack of pace causes exactly the wrong kind of tension to creep in, especially after those pivotal but painful lackluster interrogation scenes. You are holding a gun on me. No, not you. Branagh's mannered and pantomime-esque performance is far from criminal, but he, his distracting moustache and an unnecessarily dreary plot are all at odds with the edgy promos we all watched beforehand. And ultimately, the movie derails with a whimper. To a man with a hammer, every problem is a nail. Number 9, Kingsman, The Golden Circle. I've got to get to a dinner tonight, and if I miss it, let's just say Charlie might as well have killed me. The first Kingsman film was a largely unexpected treat, but this sequel struggled to match its predecessor. Once we learn that a rejected Kingsman agent is at large, it's off to America to join forces with our stateside counterparts to help destroy a global drug cartel. But what follows is a surprisingly shapeless movie made up of decent individual scenes, but lacking much in the way of overall charm. Whatever's in that safe is the answer to all our problems. It's so busy that it's easy to understand why Elton John gets angry, and why Channing Tatum rarely parts with his rifle. The trailers were slick, the movie, mm, not so much. You know what, I'm busting for a pee actually. <laughs> you can do it on me if you want. Number 8, The Chronicles of Narnia, The Lion, The Witch and The Wardrobe. Come on, it's not every day that I get to make a new friend. Here's an idea, let's cast Tilda Swinton as The Witch, James McAvoy as Mr Tumnus and have Aslan voiced by Liam Neeson. It's sure to work, right? Sadly, not really. There is much to admire here, but perhaps because of the perfection it promised, this trip to Narnia feels all too restrained. I'm sure it's just your imagination. The key scenes pass quite nicely, and the final battle is gripping, but the setup is so long, it's a relief when the wardrobe door is finally opened. With a two and a half hour runtime for a film aimed at children, it's an epic, but not in a good way. Rise, Sir Peter Wolfsbane, Knight of Narnia. Number 7, Skyfall. I made my own choices. <laughs> you think you did? The James Bond hype machine has been working over time with recent movies, but never more so than for Skyfall. And when all's said, done and blown to bits, it is a pretty good film. But is it really the series saviour that it's made to seem? This is the tricky part. Skyfall looks at times too determined to put Bond back on the action movie map, cramming guns, gadgets and fight scenes to fulfil its quota but the final result feels a little overblown. Even with the end plot twist, it's a film that leaves the audience only sort of shaken and not especially stirred. Number six, Bridget Jones's Baby. Did he put his puppet in your mouth? Helen Fielding's fan favorite novels about a London singleton, plus the first two film adaptations, ensured that the long-awaited return of Bridget to the big screen was one of the biggest movie events of 2016. So much so, that despite the film's critical and commercial success, it still feels like the love is laid on a little too thick. Woo! It's funny in parts, awkward at others, and increasingly emotional toward the end. But it's probably not quite the rom-com masterpiece that some initially build it as. And it is distinctly lacking in cheesy Hugh Grant scenes. His death seems to have hit the Eastern European teenage modeling community particularly hard. Number five, Les Miserables. I feel my shame inside me like a knife. With an ensemble cast crammed with A-list actors and an Oscar-winning director in the chair, this Les Mis adaptation was almost hailed a triumph before anyone had even seen it. 
And again, it's clearly an ambitious and definitely impressive production to satisfy fans and introduce new audiences to the story. How long before the judgment day? Before we cut the fat ones down to size. But though it seemed to be all anyone talked about back in 2012, the film's staying power hasn't matched that of other musicals, so far at least. And despite all the hubbub that originally surrounded it, Les Mis probably still looks and sounds slightly better on stage. Please do not send me out alone. Number 4. Spice World Rewind to the mid-90s and the Spice Girls were the biggest band on the planet, conquering all before them with their iconic brand of girl power. And so, they switched CDs for the cinema. Spice World was announced at the Cannes Film Festival, no less, before a whirlwind tour of endless promo leading up to its release. Look at that, Brad. Look at that. Spice Girls set to conquer the globe. But what eventually arrived seemed too much like an extended advert for the group, with awkward celebrity cameos at every turn. Yes, Spice World is fun, but without an even half-developed story or anything close to convincing performances, it could never match its momentous billing. Oh, that's enough, now should we do our own thing? Number 3. Darkest Hour I don't want you to be disliked. <laughs> More than I already am. Gary Oldman's lead performance as Winston Churchill proved an award-winning tour de force. But this film's greatest asset actually highlights deficiencies in other areas. During Churchill's pivotal scenes, the Darkest Hour hype feels pretty justified but the rest of the movie moves along in a mostly forgettable fashion. When will the lesson be learned? Director Joe Wright displays his prowess, but in a tight narrative time frame, the supporting characters fall fairly flat and the wider social context can be lost. Thanks mostly to the Oscar buzz around Oldman, audiences just expected more. Is France lost? Number 2. Slumdog Millionaire Okay, Danny Boyle's a unique and stylish director. But did this film really deserve an armful of Oscars? You don't have to be a genius. Upon release, Slumdog Millionaire was widely adored, with the story of orphan Jamal winning Who Wants to Be a Millionaire pulling on everyone's heartstrings. But over time, the original praise has muted amidst accusations that the movie trivializes poverty and social issues in India to entertain a Western audience. It says nothing of this in the guidebook. The guidebook was written by a bunch of lazy, good for nothing Indian beggars. Oh. And that upbeat Bollywood-style musical number at the end doesn't exactly help matters. The Oscar bait has rarely been so blatant. <laughs> number 1. The King's Speech I, I can't read this. Well, then you owe me a shilling for not trying. For some, to express even the slightest reservation about this film is tantamount to treason. But strip away the regal design and the award-hunting lead performances, and The King's Speech is far from revolutionary. An emotionally affecting drama, yes, with some memorable moments between Colin Firth's King and Geoffrey Rush's therapist. Feel the looseness of the jaw. <laughs> but it feels too much like another example of a film fashioned specifically for the awards season. Would it have been so lauded if it hadn't so clearly incorporated Oscar favourite themes? Apologies, Your Majesty, but probably not. We have been forced into a conflict. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo UK and subscribe for more great content.